Hey there, Offgoers. Muse here, and I am proud to present the first ever Going Off podcast live recorded at this year's MAGFest. Myself, rap critic, and Lady Jess sat down for a panel in front of way more people than we were expecting to review the Macho Man Randy Savage rap album, Be A Man. So here... It is. So I'm Rap Critic. I'm Muse. I'm Jess. And we are doing the Going Off Podcast live. Uh, (laughs) Somebody warn the East. (laughs) The Going Off Podcast in color. Ain't running no more. We ain't running no more. No. We're running our mouth, that's for sure. Our audio ain't running. <laughs> no, we're out of, are we recording? In the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. pretty okay. sure we're recording. My Adobe Premiere we're feels like slowly rolling, 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 rolling itself <laughs> out. So maybe we will get music and maybe we in won't. In the meantime. Yeah, in the meantime. So, uh, so we decided to review What You Mean, Ring Me Savages, Be A Man, Hulk, Show Me What You're Really Made Of, Uzi Up. He's a real big chunk. It's yeah. actually, it's a spoiler, but yeah. it turned out to be a real big punk, which was news to me. Yeah, yeah, Because when I thought Hulk, the last thing I thought, like, now it's like racist number one. Yeah, right. Well, um, well, we're talking about Hulk Hogan. number two. We're officially talking about Hulk Hogan more than WWE wants to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In the one yeah, song alone. Yeah, that's okay. it. That's so, so for background, um, what I thought was really fascinating about Macho Man's album. You are recording, right? Yeah. Okay. How many All right, chill, chill, chill. We are that? actually recording now. We're not just bullshitting. No. We're actually recording now. Okay. Good. Uh, and, and if you guys talk, it's gonna get picked up, and it's gonna be oh, really annoying. Good. Okay. So, so apparently, Macho Man Randy Savage put out a rap album in 2003. Apparently. And um, I guess on the surface, you'd think this would be like a cash grab, mm. because it it sounds gimmicky on the surface. Although he beat Cena by like two years. Yeah. Yeah. That actually. is true. So. Macho Man, apparently, according to his brother, Lanny Profo, the genius, uh, he really liked... Uh, you didn't realize you are gonna... <laughs> that still frame! Oh, we'll get to that still frame in a minute. That straight from an Eminem music video. <laughs> 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 like, what am, I, what am I gonna do? I guess I gotta punch him in the face! <laughs> <laughs> Where's my fisheye lens, brother? <laughs> so, so, apparently, Macho Man was really hip on hip-hop lingo, like, way before people would expect him to for like a 50 year old man. Yeah. Mm. Um, so a rap album was something he actually wanted to do for a really long time. It wasn't some cash grab gimmicky thing. It's the same thing with like with Shaquille O'Neal. Like remember when, yeah. you know, when I reviewed that album at first I thought, oh, he's probably just doing this because rap is the big thing and he wants to be in the rap. No, oh, but here's like- here's KRS-One for no reason. What? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like- actually something to be taken seriously? Like, no, it's like fucking A Tribe Called Quest, which is like respected in the early 90s. It's okay. like really weird that they would expect him, you know- At least he references Q-Tip, that's something. Yeah, that's very true. That counts mm-hmm. for something. Uh-huh. So, so we got this album. How many tracks? 14? 14. Way more than you would think would be necessary for a Macho Man album, especially <laughs> since the name of the album is Be A Man. 46 minutes. The, oh. The whole point of the album is to promote this. Well, I guess like the whole main reason people know about it is because of the diss track to Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's 13 other tracks, not including the intro track, I guess. Which we, <laughs> oh, need, man. To, we need to. Yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna play snippets of, of select tracks. But um, this intro track, you know, I guess I would imagine it would be Macho Man talking up the album. You yeah. know, be like, here's what it's about. Here's what you're in for. But it's random people, probably that just worked at the label, uh-huh. staff and crew, um, putting on funny accents, talking about how Macho Man is uh, turning his back on professional wrestling and how he's going to be a rapper from now on. Yeah. Uh, that lasted. Can, can, we, can we unplug this and it'll be okay? Who's the guy who helps us do this? I think he left. He well. is not here. Oh, well. So <laughs> He went off. We're going to go off. Ah. It is because if we just disconnect it, let me see if we, if I can actually play it for you. Um, Maybe you can hear it. Hold on. Probably not. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me let me, let me let's see what happens if I just put it up to the microphone. Uh, no. no. Can't hear it. No. Oh man. Okay. Fuck well, me. We'll, we'll we'll just reach it then. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think the saddest part, and it's a two-parter. Yeah. Oh no. Is that. One, we saw a news clip where Macho Man was talking about um, this endeavor and how he was going to turn his, like, how his wrestling career was essentially over. 
and that rap was going to be his new business venture that was going to be his, it was going to cement his legacy, basically, was that he wanted to be known as the guy who, yeah, yeah, he's a wrestler, whatever, but that hip-hop album, though. <laughs> that, <laughs> that legendary hip-hop album that we're Can still we talking just, about. Oh, please, Illmatic? <laughs> Fuck that noise. It's all about be a man, macho man. And that at the time that they were promoting this first album, he was already working on a second one oh, that never gosh. happened. <laughs> which is, is the saddest bit to me. Um, <laughs> now, can I, I just want to show this real quick. I know uh, you can't hear it, but I know you can see it. And we all know what 50 Cent looks right, like, right? Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> so, we have an official endorsement by 50 Cent, who, as we all know from all the G-Unit artists that we can all just name off the Please. top of our heads, uh, <laughs> turned out to just be another great endorsement of, uh, of great timeless hip-hop music. And, and literally he says in there, if you don't know this album, you don't know music. So, you know, if 50 Cent <laughs> says it. <laughs> I mean, you gotta believe him, right? The original working title for the album was Get Rich or Get Flying Elbow Dropped Trying. <laughs> 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 or Get Snapped Into Like a Slim Jim Trying. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, uh, we were, at, were we gonna, well, it was two things. One thing I was gonna bring up, the, uh, the Snap Into a Slim Jim commercial. Okay. And how they tried to replace Macho Man Randy Savage. I didn't yeah. realize that. Oh, yeah. See, this is where being a wrestling fan in 1994 and 1995 is crucial. Yes. <laughs> because, for those who don't remember, I mean, obviously Macho Man is part of his legacy, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> well, whether he liked it or not. I keep... Aww. In past tense. In past tense. This is one of the few times where I review an album from someone who is uh, post-mortem, because I feel like... Yeah, normally, yeah, you, you don't want to step on any toes. Yeah, exactly. That's if someone's dead, it's just like, no disrespecting them, but... This is a wrestler trying to do a rap album. So, like, come on, son. So, so Macho Man Randy Savage left the WWF in 1994 for WCW uh, with his Slim Jim endorsement, mm. which left a gaping hole open and Vince rather upset. So they had to replace him with Kevin Nash. Yes, with Kevin <laughs> Nash. We all know has infinitely as much charisma as Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> if, if you could push over empty pizza boxes, I think you, you've got a job. <laughs> if you can push over pizza boxes without tearing a quad, Nash, you've got it. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> if you can flip your hair triumphantly and do knee lifts into the corner, <laughs> Nash, just, you got it. It just ain't the same without the Macho Man. And even, <laughs> even Bam Bam Bigelow with the, with the tattooed head oh, yeah, he tried right to do in 15 too. minute breaks and it was not as good. We got a hand raised. Hello, sir. Are we taking questions right now? <laughs> wait, wait, hold up, motherfucker. Wait. I'm sorry, Kevin. <laughs> at, the, at the end of the video, we're going to be taking questions after the review. Awesome. So if you still remember your question at the end, when we run out of material, down. Because we got a lot of material for this episode. We surprisingly do. This album gave us so much to talk about, <laughs> which is so great. What is this directly related to Macho Man Randy Savage? Motherfucking better man. Man, motherfucker, you, you know you play it. <laughs> <laughs> Your question's gonna be like, I like Macho Man Randy Savage. Anyway, I was thinking about feminism. No. Uh, <laughs> hey, be nice, be nice. All right, all right, what's the question? Um, well, like I said, um, this is less of a question, more of a correlation, observation, something like that. But I remember specifically when he said, you know, snap into a slender, you bite into it and like make that snappy noise. Yeah. yeah. So me being young and stupid at the time, I figured that you thought uh, that it, it made the noise. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, we all big and awesome like Punch Man Ranch. <laughs> Needless to say, her life is a lot crueler than TV when they just <laughs> Some gyms are remarkably rubbery. Yes. <laughs> and they don't snap as much. And they just slightly bend and then rip off. If we were talking like pretzels. <laughs> snap <laughs> to a Snap to a roll to a Snap to a roll gold. <laughs> That'd be different. Oh it's honey mustard. <laughs> okay, so. So about this album, okay. we gotta get into the album. Um, so it starts. Do, 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 well, oh, we're not even playing audio, right? Yeah, we're not playing audio. Okay. But so th there's this British you're guy. You have to find that shit for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I gotta, I gotta say this. I really wanted to have a physical copy of the album here to, to like give away. 
we were gonna like autograph it and it would be really cool. Mm. Would anyone like to guess how much a physical copy of Be a Man by Macho Man Randy said? How much? Go ahead. $160. Try $700. <laughs> <laughs> Seven fucking dollars for that okay. shit. Okay, so. It's impossible. The so, Meanwhile Sax album is available for a penny. <laughs> so, you literally have to pay more for shipping and handling. <laughs> so, rap critic, so rap critic came to me the other day when we were like getting ready for this panel, and he goes, so, so you have any idea how much this album costs? And I'm like, okay, well, it's by a famous celebrity, so obviously it's like $60. He's like, nah, $700. And I was like, that's like three car payments. <laughs> like, oh, that's some fucking bullshit right there. I'm willing to assume there are only three copies in existence, and they were spread to the far they corners. They burned every last <laughs> copy. They were spread to the four corners of the earth, except for north or some shit, because it's only three. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you want the CD inlay, that shit's in Asia. But if you want a booklet, that's over here in... Oh, okay, anyway. Um, the data layer's in Kansas. <laughs> but... <laughs> oh, that's the next documentary, is the b and yes, yes, sir. So, we start off the album, and uh, I, it's a damn shame that we couldn't get these recordings for you. But on the album, they, let me see if I can do an approximation of the voice. It, he goes like this, and I am not trying to exaggerate in any way. I heard Macho Man Randy Savage is putting out an album, and it is hard. It's like this British guy doing a fucking... <laughs> I heard it's hot. Yeah, like, it's like, really? Are you trying to pull the British rap fans? Like, it, <laughs> Macho Man Randy Savage. It really reminded me of uh, the Hail Mary Malum album with the with the skits in between where they were like, oh, they're holding a, uh, a charity concert to save the bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> it was, they even had a British guy in that bit, too. Yeah. It's we like, want to get every demographic. For and this. here's the thing about this album. It's like... It's at the beginning. You know that song, um, uh, No Vaseline by Ice Cube, where you hear all these people layered in oh. talking about, like, you know, NWA shit without Ice Cube, ha, ha, like all the little shit like and that. Like, Except there's a British guy who you can hear prominently over everyone else, yeah. and he al he's always saying something that's really stupid. Like, <laughs> he kicks a lot of butt. It's like, what? Did that uh, need to be heard it. over everyone else? I remember Macho Man, he's the wrestling king. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> it's like no one like they, they didn't fucking go out on the street and be like, hey, what did you think of Roger? Like it's obviously oh, yeah. like yeah, fucking in-house producers and shit. The only thing missing was that here's what they think about shit. <laughs> but then it follows up the very first line in the song is hot diggity damn, glad you set it off. So it's like, is he referencing that song right now? Oh, of course is he is. Is he really referencing the fucking okay. song from the, uh, yeah? Yeah. So for those who know um, Ice Cube. Uh, from something other than the family movies, which uh, which is apparently a thing. Now I know Ice Cube. Well, for the, like this generation only knows him for those. Yeah, movies. like there might be a, a oh, lot of people out here stop. who only know Ice Cube for Are We There Yet and fucking uh, uh, Book of the Dead or whatever. Wow. And which not is even weird. Like Friday? Yeah, no, not even fucking Friday. How many people out here know Friday? Okay, cool. The fact that there is not all hands up is really disappointing <laughs> to me. <laughs> because that was the shit that I grew up on. And the sure. fact that there are some people who are like, I only know him from um, oh, Are We There Yet? Oh. Which I remember even as a kid watching that. Like, I was about eight, year old, eight years old. No, 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 excuse me. It's like 2003, right? Yeah, just about. Uh, so I was about like uh, 11, 11 or 12. Watching that shit, like, even then I knew Ice Cube and I was like, dude. Come on. Like, this and this is me with a slightly higher voice, so I'm like, dude, come on. You know you're better than me. <laughs> so, you know, like, and, and so just the fact that there are people who don't know that. But anyway, the point is, there was a time in uh, Ice Cube's life where he made a diss song to NWA, which stands for uh, 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 Negroes with Attitude. <laughs> where, where <laughs> which stands for N Words with Attitude. Uh, <laughs> where, where, um, you know, they dissed him, and then he dissed them back, and he was like, God damn, I'm glad y'all set it off. Used to be hard, now you're just wet and soft. Uh, referring to uh, the vagina, of course. And, <laughs> and, 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 and what was funny to me is that he's implicating that, uh, Macho Man Randy Savage is implicating that uh, lyric, but he says, hot diggity damn, I'm glad y'all set it off. 
which sounds like a fucking 1890s <laughs> goddamn miser from back in the day. Hot diggity. <laughs> like, as, as somebody with a history degree, they did not say that in the 1890s. Uh, <laughs> yo, why you gotta ruin shit? <laughs> it ruins the illusion. <laughs> so, um, I wanted to see him with like gold nuggets. But <laughs> Randy Savage juggling gold like oh, dig it, dig it. Uh, <laughs> gold miser man Randy oh, Savage I drink your milkshake oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> so 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 <laughs> we start yeah but here's the yeah, thing I hate to pull this up in front of everybody but yeah if, if, D- don't don't read ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Whatever you do, ahead. don't look at that. I know it's supposed to like the impetus makes you look at it. Focus on me, goddammit. I don't know how computers <laughs> work. I just put my hands in front of your laptop. Don't look at it. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 we start with the album. You think it would start with the diss track, but it doesn't. No. Originally, you know, you'd think the CD would only be maybe a single and a B-side, but no. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Because it really doesn't have any right to have more than three songs, maybe. Yeah. But no. It started with, what was the first track? What was the name of that one? The f- <laughs> let, me, let, let me go to it. First of all, can, I, can we just talk a second about the people doing the, oh, that needs to stop today. <laughs> Can I, Are you fucking enough of that shit? <laughs> I'm so glad we have support because I remember we talked about this last year. It, please say what's on your mind. What? Oh no, I, I just wanted to also thank everybody for like, I really was heartbroken when I saw that we were at the same time as the Ninja Sex Party panel. So Shh, I just shut, no, to say, oh, don't go, don't leave! Stop, stop, stop. Shit, I forgot No, please, no, no, we have cookies. No. We'll show you our titties. Just <laughs> don't leave. <laughs> So. No! Look what you've done! Do you see? You don't do that! You don't tell people about the- You don't poof our panel! You don't Charlie poof our panel! Oh. You guys know what I mean when I say that, right? When when Charlie Poos did that song and he was like, let's Marvin Gaye and get it on, it's like, oh yeah, there is a song that's so much better than this. Okay, back to the album part. As, as, Macho Man. As if the intro wasn't enough, the very first track is called I'm Back. Or I'm Back. I'm Back. I'm, back. I'm, back. I'm trying to show you an approximation of what it sounded like, and it's basically him going, I'm back. It's the creepiest thing. It, it, it it's the creepiest like... intro to an album, I think. Especially after all those funny voices. It's like, oh, enough of that shit. I'm back. It's like, oh my god. This is a force to be reckoned with. And then immediately the first beat kicks in and you're like, oh, never mind. Oh, okay. If only we could show you that first beat, which just sounds so 2003. Oh, yeah. Yeah, beep, it's beep, so beep, dated. Beep. <laughs> um... That, sh- that stuff sounded outdated in 2003. Like, if you oh, took yeah. a time machine back in 2003, you'd be like, wow, this should have happened in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, Macho Man does have the, the honor of being the first rapper who tried a hip-hop venture. Because yeah, eat your heart out, John Cena. He'd be Cena by two years, which yeah. is fair to say. But you don't hear anyone ever bring this up. Well, not you like, know? well, that's assuming that people know that this album exists. Well, see, like, when, when we reviewed the John Cena album on the podcast, it mm. was surprisingly listenable. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. We, we, thought, album, we thought that we were going to, because originally, we were going to review the John Cena album for this podcast. And we right. were like, oh, John Cena, wrestler who's a rapper, hardy har har har, it's going to be hilarious. And then we listened to it and it was like, you know, oh okay, um, <laughs> like this, this is actually I all right. I seriously think it's such a thing where we, we've been so spoiled by the, by the rich homie Kwans and the Futures and, and, and the and, Young Thugs and the Fetty Wops that when something like John Cena's You Can't See Me comes around, you're like, you know what? I don't know if it's nostalgia goggles or what, but this isn't nearly as awful as, uh, as the stuff in Top 40. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so coming on a medium nobody expected, which is the which is putting it extremely lightly. <laughs> yeah, like nobody saw this shit. No, coming. seriously, nobody saw this. No, <laughs> especially not with E three records, which they act like what we knew that? what that was. Like oh, yeah. <laughs> the Macho Man Randy Savage is teaming up with like they they put like a, a sort of like like a news report, like a fake news report, like Macho Man Randy Savage is uh, teaming up with E three records. It's like. 
Bitch, just say fucking Def Jam. We don't know who the fuck D3 Records is. <laughs> Interscope has just signed Macho Man Randy Savage. Everybody around the studio is asking, do they know what the fuck they're doing? And we honestly don't believe they do. <laughs> We're taking bets. So, uh, he says... They're extremely desperate. <laughs> it's like, G-Unit has wasted a lot of money. Nobody cares who anyone... They even signed Mace. No one even remembers who that is. Who remembers who Mace is? Wow. Exactly. All right. <laughs> With that all the money that, spent, that, that they spent on Mace, more hands should have been raised, is all I'm saying. Uh, so <laughs> he says, so he starts off with, ah, oh, 28 minutes in, we're finally getting to the lyrics. So yeah. he says, I'm the, I'm the wrestling king, but now I'm spitting lyrics. Now, I wanted to ask y'all the question because... I don't know dick all about wrestling. I had to give you a little. That's why I'm lesson. on the podcast. Yeah. Exactly. So is is Macho Man Randy Savage, and I keep saying the whole name because I'm slightly inebriated. Oh, and it's fine. And it just helps me roll it out more if I have a rote understanding of Macho Man Randy Savage. All right, cool. Instead of Randy, the oh shit, I messed up half the name. Oh no, I'm. <laughs> all right. No, does, like is he the wrestling king? He was in fact at one point. Yeah. Macho King. Yeah. Macho Randy King Savage. Randy Savage. Macho. Actually, you saw that match, so you have no excuse. Wait, did I say it? I, that I, was the one with Dusty Rhodes. I will keep falling no, back on the inebriation excuse. Okay, so I showed him the match with Dusty Rhodes when the Million Dollar Man bought his uh, Dusty Rhodes. Oh, uh, bought Dusty Rhodes' yeah. girlfriend. Oh my god, that's yeah. the saddest thing when Sapphire turned heel, by the way. Yeah, that was I didn't so know, bad. I didn't know dick about wrestling. A little bit of insight but about the way Sapphire. They, okay, okay, okay. So Sapphire was like a... I know we're already getting off topic, but Sapphire... Please, we're going off topic. Uh, that's exactly what this is named after. Uh, so Sapphire was like this really big uh, Dusty Rhodes mark, and she was yeah. in the front row, and... She just really loved Dusty Rhodes, and it was like, hey, you know, you could be his, like, valet. And this was like a dream, like a fan come true thing. So did this for about, like, a year or two. And then they wrote this gimmick for her. It's like, well, now you're going to turn on Dusty, and you're going to be, like, a va another valet aside Sensational Sherry for Ted DiBiase. And she was so sad that she couldn't work with Dusty anymore that she just left the company. She was like, well, if I can't work with Dusty, fuck this. What yeah, do I have? That's, really dedication to that's why true. she left, and a lot of people don't know I'm that. The other thing is, so is sad. that for those of you who do not know who the Million Dollar Man is, he's the one with the evil laugh who is now a Christian minister. <laughs> he is he's still doing it. Take evil what laugh you want he, from that. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew his voice so I could do it. Try um, to imitate it. Oh, God. Uh, the laugh is really loud, so if you pulled it, it up on eye. YouTube, you could actually hear it properly. Unfortunately, <laughs> the, the multimedia aspect is all Skip tits up. A little bit so, so he was, in fact, a wrestling king, so he's not lying. Coming he on really the isn't. nobody expected, which is very true. I'm yeah. pretty sure most of y'all didn't expect that shit. Like, no. wait, he did, a, he did an album? Oh, this is probably like a gimmick, right? No. No, no. <laughs> all right, we have the same motherfucker asking questions. <laughs> like... Like some kind of, what are you, the question king? Was this 20 questions? Question huh? king. Relax. No, I'm kidding. I'm playing. I'm so playing. I appreciate all you don't motherfuckers. Go. Um, hey, yeah, don't go like the other people. I'm fucking Isaac Hayes on fucking, uh, what, what was the name of that song? Uh, da, 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 da. Bam, bam. Every fucking rapper samples it. Uh, uh, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Does it being that mean being uh, that you don't want to be I don't know what the hell he's talking about. I'm just trying to make the panties drop. Anyway, no, I'm so, I'm so playing. What's the question? Again? I'm so playing. I'm so playing. I value you so much. I love. We're going to make this a running joke if this guy asks the question. So you know you have to come up with a question after this, right? Okay. All right, go on, go on. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. An English guy oh, told you that Macho Man Randy Savage released an album. And it, was it the same English guy from the intro of this album? <laughs> it would be great if he was just like fucking like contracted to go around and talk to everyone about the album. That would be hilarious. No, it was my history class, I'm sorry. You ruined it now. You ruined the whole joke. I hope you can't sleep and, and then you dream about it. This line here though. It, Yes. yes. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda do. <laughs> this line we're looking at here, Macho Man Randy Savage, the true chief warrior. Critics, I'm ignoring ya. 
to, to Lazy Euphoria, Euphoria is honestly really fucking good for Macho Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, with, that's... With, so I was just like, shit, D- okay. Did he just use more than one syllable See, to thing, rhyme? Here's the thing that sucks about not having a physical copy of the album, because yeah. Wikipedia won't tell you who wrote the lyrics. <laughs> like, like and that shit was not you, him. You I refuse to give him credit. Yeah, it's just like, did Macho Man, because like, like, right, like, right. like you were saying, he was a really big hip-hop fan, mm-hmm. and according to his brother, he was really hip on the slang. Yeah. So, like, these aren't, the lyrics on this album aren't so good that you wouldn't believe that Macho wrote them, but every so often there is a line like that where you're like, I don't know, that sounds like it <laughs> might be a bit above his talents. But, uh, what was the question, sir? Yeah. I don't think there was one. Oh no, you gotta ask a question now. I hope that makes you feel some type of way. So, I'm probably safe to assume that... that You are not safe at all. (laughs) Uh, At least one of you have actually listened to this? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I always All listen. of us have listened to yeah. this at least twice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I listen to the album. I always listen to an album that I review twice because there's the first time where it just washes over me and I'll just like fuck around and just like do whatever and let it happen. Together and we listen to this at least three times. Yeah. And the second time. I mean, we when took I, notes earlier today. Yeah, exactly. When I, when, uh, just to give you guys a clue in on what I do for albums, the first time I listen to it, I'll just do something else. Like I'll play fucking Candy Crush or whatever. And, or, or Rick or, or uh, uh, Pocket Morty's, which by the way, I wish they totally paid me for this because I would promote the shit out of Pocket Morty's. It's funny shit. Um, but like, I'll just do something else while the album is happening. And then the second time when I listen to it, I actually like listen intently uh, to rate it because that's how I do things. I like to let something viscerally uh, hit me, like just in a way that, like, okay, as it is happening, I may be doing something else that's mindless. But I'm letting the album happen over yeah. me, and then the second time, okay, now I'm applying my critical mind to it. Oh, and like yeah, yeah, the, it's background noise the, the first time. It's Fallout for me, and yeah. then I'm listening to this, <laughs> and then it's like I'm driving. Yeah, uh, and it, it has almost my undivided attention. Yeah, exactly. Besides driving, obviously. So, so I, I am paying attention. <laughs> like, please don't crash. We like you. <laughs> so, uh, when I listen to an album, just to let you guys know, like firsthand, you guys, uh, fans who are listening to me, or motherfuckers who just happen to be passing by, when I listen to albums, I actually do try to take it seriously. And in not taking it seriously the first time, because once again, with all media, when you first see or hear something, it hits you viscerally. And that's just the way an art is. And so I always try to I always try to do something else while I'm doing it so that if something does stick out to me, that it's something that really gets me, that makes me stop doing what I'm doing, that's something mindless. And so that's the kind of mini test. And then when the second time I listen to it is when I apply my critical mind to it. So I don't try to listen to it the first time critically because all things, the first time they hit you, everything, since you were a kid, like all the kid shows that you watch, they hit you visually in some stupid fucking level. And that got to you. But I try to reserve that for later so that I can apply my critical mind to it on top of the, oh, maybe I enjoyed this riff uh, on a very basic level, like, you know, it hit me and I liked it. But then on the second level, it's kind of like, okay, now how do I feel about this? Does this really make an impact and shit? Can, can I just say? I'm sorry. I really wanted to reveal something because as, as, a, as a live podcast, I felt that it's cool that you guys should know this. We should probably edit this shit out just so all the motherfuckers who didn't come here will never know. I was just about to ask, which song are we into? Oh, <laughs> no, I was actually, I, I actually. Out of 14? We're only 36 minutes in. We got an hour and a half. Uh, uh, but you weren't asking a question, were you? Were you asking a question? That was my question. That was it. Moving right to fucking so down. Man. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, so I just want to say in answer to your question, this album was inflicted upon me twice. <laughs> Basically what I'm trying to say is. <laughs> no, no. What, what happened was he goes, he said to me, he goes, let's watch, uh, let's listen, listen to the Macho Man Randy Savage album. And I was like... We're gonna listen to that? Like, are you serious? Like, this is not the John Cena album. At least that was tolerable. Come on now. And I was like, we're gonna listen to it twice because I'm an artist when I critique this shit. And I I said to him, my fireball whiskey. So I said to him, so I said, I'll listen to it with you once. And then I listened to it on my own once without him. And it was much more enjoyable. <laughs> okay, now here's the thing. A first, the first song of an album always hits you a lot harder sure. than the rest, especially when there's mostly fucking filler, which is basically <laughs> what this fucking album is. 
Yeah, there really are only about maybe five songs worth talking about yeah. in great detail. Yeah. 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 Scroll down because are, are, okay. is there much more to say? Oh, oh. <laughs> I love what you said about this. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. yeah. People <laughs> on the street say, Randy, you the illest. Have you seen a doctor, Randy? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, that's honestly, what people are actually say. Like, go like, to they're the like, hospital. Well, Randy, you're like 56 me. years old. You've been wrestling for 20 years. You should probably not be out in public. You should be like getting the best medical care that you can. Huh. Because fucking, according to the death rates of fucking wrestling, Ooh, There's yeah. like 20 wrestlers have died in the last five years. Randy, what are you doing on Slime Time Live from the first album? You should be relaxing. What are you doing on Nickelodeon in a show no one's watching? Okay, but we also have to remember that Macho Man Randy Savage, not only did he drop a rap album, but he also did Ready to Rumble. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> I'm so I, I'm kind of thinking that he, he wanted the <laughs> of money you did. There was that more is. than anything. <laughs> uh, so, so people want people want to know if Macho's still in the ring. People people want to know if Macho's uh, if Randy's doing his you thing. You fucked it up. You got to do it again. I, know, I, I fucked it up. I, I will I will dream about questions. it. Here's my thing. I'm drinking too little. Here's my thing. <laughs> people want to know if Macho's still in the ring. Okay, yeah. now now please. Uh, uh, enlighten these people as to how Macho Man's career fucking went. Okay, so cool. Um, <laughs> in, uh, where, where should we start? For the people that know they're laughing out loud. Do the, we want to start with don't. Mega Powers or do we want to start starting later? With, I'm starting with 2000. When, okay, when, when sounds good. Now, oh, wait. Now keep in mind, this album came out in 2003. Yes. Yes, that's okay, correct. So, so 2000, WCW mm -hmm. bought out by WWE. Macho Man did not join. He did yeah, not, he, he left. He did not jump ship. Yeah, he just, he walked off into the sunset. So 2003 was his big return, if you don't count Spider-Man. Which he does count Spider-Man because he actually mentions it in the diss track. I count Spider-Man. Yeah, he, he, yeah. So, so three we'll years bring that up later. So three years after WCW gets, gets acquired by WWE, he drops this album. Mm -hmm. So Macho, you still in the ring? Short answer is no. <laughs> People want to know if Randy's doing his thing. That's debatable. <laughs> because we're not sure exactly what his thing is it's up for debate. <laughs> so when later he even says like, "I'm gonna do this," so he says, "I'm doing what I desire, and I'm gonna do this till I retire." Macho Man retired in 2005. <laughs> so, so literally after, two years later, he retired after being in TNA for about a year, not competing in sanctioned matches, I believe. So, no, this is about it. This is end of the road. Which, which, granted, he said that wrestling, you know, that that's the old me. The rapper, and if you look at the cover, oh, oh, well, we actually, the cover yes, bad? yes, because that's worth discussing. <laughs> Okay, so let's, let's get back to the <laughs> let's skip the 50 cent endorsement I mean, because, as we all know, that's priceless. Yeah. In 2003, excuse me, uh, the different uh, the word I meant to say was worthless. Make that uh, as big as possible. So, so Hercules Hernandez up here with the chain. <laughs> um, so Macho Man. You remember Macho Man? You remember you remember what he looks like? <laughs> no. Did Macho Man look like a bitch? No. So he may have the big cowboy hat. The frills. We, we gotta show this when we do the podcast the glasses, for the videos of people. Sure. So he had the glasses, the hat. That's the old Macho Man. The cowboy hat. This yes. this is how Macho Man wants to be remembered. <laughs> Unsure if he can really best this chain. <laughs> It looks like, wait, I'm pretty sure I've got it. I'm in way over my head here, well, people. Well, Muse, 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 remember, it's really a toss-up between this or beating the fuck out of Oliver Platt in a dream sequence. <laughs> he sure he looks like, like, he's got that face like he, he knows that he might not be able to do this, but he's trying to pretend that he can. If I take more steroids, maybe! <laughs> what you can't see is that it's wrapped around his leg and he's like, I can step forward, brother. <laughs> you fall on the face. <laughs> It's that, it really is that face right before you're about to fuck up completely. <laughs> and you're thinking maybe you'll have that last minute thing that'll save you, but it's not working at all. And debatably, this album is him fucking up completely. Yeah, <laughs> so. Well, it depends on who you ask. No. Well, I'm sure Macho Man couldn't have been prouder of this. <laughs> okay, all right, we have a question. Please tell me this relates to the album. He looks like a store brand village person. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidentally, there is a song by the village people called Macho Man. <laughs> I don't think we've mentioned this in 
this enough, but can I just point out how boring this album cover is? Oh, it, like, it is pretty this, boring. If you didn't know who Macho Man was, the framing of this is awful. And if you didn't know, if you didn't know who Macho Man was, if you were just walking down an aisle, would you pick this up? This would not get your attention. It literally looks it like looks this generic. guy doesn't know what he's doing. It and looks very listen, generic. Is and then it it's ever more like, evident. Oh, oh. Oh, see, shit, he doesn't know. It, it, it's like a fucking <laughs> concept know. album. Like, the concept of not knowing what you're fucking doing. <laughs> All right, we Did have... Did you watch the video of H. John Benjamin, by the way, doing the jazz album, and he doesn't know how to play piano? This is basically <laughs> the equivalent of a guy who doesn't know how to rap, but he still released a rap album, and the joke's on us. <laughs> He knows. he knows what he's doing. Like, why did you listen to this? Uh, we have a question. Is this related to Macho Man Randy Savage? Yes. Uh, uh, Morty. Uh, Morty. You gotta, <laughs> gotta talk about Macho Man Morty. <laughs> you gotta take these niggas. You gotta shuffle them way after Rock Morty. Next hundred years. I don't want to interrupt. But you are interrupting, though. Have you seen if you can turn the volume on projectory? Hmm? See? Oh, I've heard of it. We're kind of dumb. Trajectory? What's so that? no. If, if if we turn the volume up on the projector, I, I I'm gonna say it's too uh, late at this point. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's not working out. Oh, we, Peter. despite my fucking high quality <laughs> videos. <laughs> the look I just. I, Peter's giving me the Macho Man face. See? <laughs> just because I'm standing behind a projector doesn't really mean I know what I'm doing the, back here. Despite my high quality videos that I'm sure you enjoy. Uh, uh, I'm not exactly a master of uh, fucking uh, audio yeah. visual media. He, he really, in he really doesn't like editing at all. Actually, <laughs> I really don't like <laughs> editing. I really don't like editing. I wish I could just put it in my mind and make it, and then just put it out for you guys to enjoy. But there's all this fucking manual work. We have to do all this shit. And shit. To that guy. Why are you pointing to yourself? I can do it. Do you want to? I already did. Where you live? Position has been filled. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I trust you. I trust you. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. Where do you live? North Carolina. North Carolina? The irony, the irony is that I used to live in North Carolina. So if I was in North Carolina, I'd be like, yo, you the dude. But unfortunately, I live in Maryland now. And I live with him, so. Yeah, exactly. So I've ruined it for you now, but I will sleep about it. Um, so, um, Wrestlings? okay, yeah, we have the, the first resident MC will be my claim to fame. I'm right. sure fucking John Cena is is, is restless. He, he can't. <laughs> he he can't, he can't claim all. it. He can't. He can't. <laughs> so, I'm like Dion. Bo and Mike, I can play two sports. <laughs> this, this I'm is glad wrong. he's got a, life, a laugh out of everybody. This is wrong on so many levels. We looked this up. First of all, I'm, I'm just gonna say, if everyone can at the exact same time for us, this, this would be glorious. On the count of three, what sport comes to mind when you think Deion Sanders? One, two, three. Football. What other sport did Deion Sanders play? One, Baseball. two, three. Baseball. Oh. <laughs> oh shit! Jokes on you, motherfuckers. He also played another sport. It was three sports. He played basketball as well. Oh yeah, oh, yeah that's right. Now here's my thing. Right. Uh, it's interesting that people know him for baseball because when we looked it up for this episode, all we could find was the shit he did for football and in like high school. Exactly. The only thing we could find for baseball and basketball was stuff that he did in high school. So we were like, okay, so no, please don't leave. Please don't leave. We'll give you cookies. So, don't leave us. So, oh, he's switching seats. Now I feel bad. All right. But here's a question, man. We're sorry, which, guy. Which two sports does Macho Man play? Yeah, does hip hop count as a sport in his head? Yeah, maybe like metaphorically. Well, I or mean, the game, the rap game. Yeah, the maybe, rap game. Maybe, you know. Maybe acting. <laughs> oh, we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. Oh, but okay. here's my thing. Here's my thing. Okay, so Dion. Uh, uh, Deion Sanders. All right, maybe I'll say baseball, which ruins our fucking joke. God damn it, people! We really should have cued you guys on what we were doing. But anyway, we ruined it, so we're just gonna fucking roll with it. You guys know him for baseball. Fuck it. But as far as I looked up on Google, and you motherfuckers at home can look this shit up, uh, uh, Deion Sanders didn't do dick concerning baseball. And the only thing that you can look up his shit on is football. So fuck you, audience members, for not helping us participate in this shit. <laughs> And not preemptively knowing what we were I trying thought, to set up. I anyway, that was so good. I had so much faith. <laughs> but uh, but the point is, um, he, he's known for football mainly, and he does baseball. But he also did basketball. And the thing that is like, so we don't good. know him. Like we don't. You can't yeah. name me like a basketball game that he played. 
That was fucking classic or any shit like that. And the thing is, it's the same way we says, uh, I'm like Dion, Bo, and Mike. I don't know Bo specifically, but I do know Mike in reference to Michael Jordan. And I know that he played, I know that he played uh, golf for a little while. And baseball. And baseball. No, I know that he played, baseball was the main I thing. I saw Space Jam. But, <laughs> I can see Space Jam. But he sucked dick at baseball. And so he went back to basketball. So, for you, Racho, uh, Ma- Macho Man Randy Savage, to say, yeah, I'm as good at rap a- as my second sport as Michael Jordan is at baseball. <laughs> Not exactly a good brag is what I'm trying to say. So moving on. Moving on. <laughs> that was a <laughs> mega setup just for me to say that shit. And Rocksteady, you should have never got me started in this rap game now. Y'all are nearly departed. That's retarded. <laughs> See, this is what's really funny about this album. Because there's a few things Monchman wants to remind you. That he's here to kick butt. And <laughs> he that, says that, that a lot. That y'all are chumps. Mm-hmm. And that this is, on the surface, supposed to be a family-friendly album. It's not explicit. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. but in 2003, I, I guess, yeah. throwing the R-word around, <laughs> like it was like willy-nilly. It's completely fucking cool, apparently. Like it was the end of the world, like later. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Like, that was perfectly okay. Mm. Yeah, it was a different time. But exactly. although, Even though, yeah, to be fair, 2003, 2003 wasn't just, very fair, so. No, so. Are you sorry for no, I'm not that fat. <laughs> I'm not Ruben Stuttered out this bitch. All right. He's so he's on American Idol now. He's like a. Is he a judge on American Idol? Well, no, they're doing like they do on on The Voice, where he's like like a like a coach. I was about to say, I'm pretty sure American Idol doesn't fucking exist anymore. Like, ain't that shit canceled? It's in the last season. Is in the last. Se- is it like in the middle of it right now? Can I officially say that shit is dead? Dude, you could have said this probably five, six Thank years you. ago. Thank you. So, you should have never got me started in this rap game. Now you're dearly departed. That's retarded. Arrested of coming off like this. First of all, yeah, that's what I said. Thank you, guy in the audience. I'm pretty sure it's a black guy. There's two black guys next to each other. It really is just him they talking into a mirror. They don't all look the same. God. <laughs> Can you fucking believe what I'm trying to do here? <laughs> like, you're taking this serious? Racist? <laughs> So, all right, someone just so, raised their I'm hand. Glad, I'm glad that came Like up. some kind of asshole. Are you supposed to be Frank from Dead Rising, by the way? No, I'm just fucking yes. with you. Okay, good. I, I, I was hoping so. It. That's awesome. All right, continue. Uh, please continue. Go ahead. I'm going to be charitable and say maybe he meant retarded in a good way. Like, my flow's so retarded. People keep He's saying so that to me. Yeah, I don't know. People <laughs> keep saying that to me. Like, I, retarded I is a good thing. Like, you know, like, good retarded is... No, like, and, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, because sure the thing no. is, people who uh, have, um, I don't think retarded is a bad word, in and of itself, in and of itself, because it literally, from an context. Italian, from an Italian, like, if you were to talk etymologically, ret- retard means to, like, literally be slower, right. and the idea is that someone who is retarded is slower at comprehending certain things. I just want to let you know we're two seconds away from turning into the Tumblr. No, no, no. <laughs> no. That they're starting, that I, their reputation no. is starting to get. I don't. No, and he says, I'm uh, ready as ever like the batteries in Q-tip. And like Q-tip, I'll make him stop and breathe, first of all. Just a reference to Q-tip. Which is like, whoa, you know a Tribe Called Quest? Now, look, I don't think Tribe Called Quest is the greatest uh, rap group of all time. It's but just the fact that you reference them. It yeah, is something. Like, that's pretty cool. No like. Sleep em. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. This is hilarious. <laughs> so don't sleep. I'm constantly dropping a bomb like on your CD ROM. It's MachoMan.com. <laughs> I'm glad this guy clap. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Because <laughs> I guess he's, he's thinking about the enhanced CD. When you put it into your CD ROM, you could go to MachoMan.com and watch that minute promo they filmed of him punching out the guy dressed like a Hulk Hogan and nothing else. <laughs> Because that's all they filmed in an afternoon. <laughs> like, like, on your CD-ROM, you can literally visit Macho Man. Doc. I don't know how internet connection was back then. But you can't just fucking go to a website based it on a CD-ROM. It was like dial-up, man. Yeah, he, 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 he's, he's talking about those free discs you would get at the free trials of AOL. <laughs> oh, AOL shit. That shit. 
So okay, well, yeah, we talked about that one. The, got, about the entire two got the fury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he says, "Remember me." <laughs> oh, this is the song. Remember me. Literally oh titled God, "Remember Me." Now, like I said, I don't know dick about wrestling. I don't even know pussy about wrestling. Let me be fair. Uh, now he says, "Remember me." I'm seeing old macho. Uh, oh no, this is the chick singing. Remember the annoying the fucking chicks that can't macho sing. That I used to be. Yeah. I was still, still the reigning king, so remember, remember me. me. Now, what I love. Why she's singing that part. I don't know. Now, please remember this. There is a woman on here saying, "Remember me for the things I did 15 fucking years ago." Because this is 2003, and he's asking you to remember things from fucking 1993. Is this, and shit. Is this the song where he talks about being champion in '89? Yeah. Yeah. This is some Uncle Rico shit yeah. on this track. Where he's just like, "Man, I won the title in '89, and I was king of the ring. Remember all that shit? Remember the remember the Pontiac Silver Dome? Ninety-three thousand. We sold that shit out. Like, yeah, cool. Um." What about the last decade, Mike? <laughs> what have you done in the past decade? <laughs> Remember when I was in that tag match with Zeus to promote that shitty Hogan movie? <laughs> see, see how we didn't mention that in the song. Okay. We had a whole song about so, stories about late 80s shit. Here's what I love. He says, beware, I'm warning you to stay out of my way because I'll have you running scared like a castaway. He'll have you running to a deserted island to get away from house, how scary, and how macho he in fact is. I love how the crowd reacted completely without any of my like prep or anything like that. Everyone literally went like, what the Was fuck he is that? he talking about? <laughs> like, wait, did, like, are, okay, first of all, here's the thought process. Is he referring to Tom Hanks? <laughs> and secondly, did... Tom Hanks run away from something? Like, I'm pretty sure the train, w uh, excuse me, the plane with FedEx fucking crash landed or something. Like, he wasn't running away from his marriage or some stupid shit like that. It was like a coincidence that fucking, uh, yeah. I don't know, a thunder uh, strike or some shit happened. Like, what the fuck is running and scared? Like, where the fuck did this happen this from? This is why I want to know who wrote the songs. Yeah, exactly. Was it Fiddy? Did <laughs> was it, write these songs you think Fiddy sent? Just ashamed that he had to cash that check for writing a rhyme for Macho Man Randy Savage. It's a whole album of throwaway lines that he didn't use. He just gave him a Macho Okay, man. now, can I say this? Here's the thing that pissed me off, and I think that you'll agree with me. Macho Man Randy Savage, I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know dick or vagina sure. about Macho Man Randy Savage before a couple of weeks ago when uh, Jess uh, showed me some of his, I want to say battles, because that makes it sound more epic. Fuck it, I'll say battles. Gladiatorial epic Exactly. Showdowns. Yeah, exactly. The fucking gladiator coming in. <laughs> wait, wait, y'all laugh. But here's the funny thing about that moment. Let, let us go off once again. Uh, go no, off really? into this. No, 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 wait, wait, legit. We got uh, 32 minutes, at least 32 more minutes. I thought you wanted um, to do a Q&A. Wait, uh, Maybe. What? we'll get to it. Uh, what I think is really funny is that the gladiatorial, like literally there is a piece out there that has existed for more than 200 years or 150 for you fucking classical music nerds out there that goes like this. And as instinctually, you kind of, you, you may not laugh, but you'll kind of smile because you'll be like, oh, that's the song for the clowns. Originally, that little motif that goes that was supposed to be for fucking gladiators. And you guys were laughing, but literally that was originally the intent of that musical motif. It was supposed to be, here is the coming out of the gladiators. They're going to fucking battle. I'm not even joking with you. Look this up, please. Please tell me I'm wrong. And, and what's funny is that how time kind of like changes what music yeah, means. Yeah, the perception. Changes. Yeah, exactly. And because someone along the time in the 20th century decided to go, hey, wait a minute, you know what? That would sound really funny as... If clowns came out to this. <laughs> you, know, you know, the first time it probably was like clowns came out and like parodied a gladiatorial thing and it just stuck. Yeah, exactly. Probably. Yeah. I, I thought you were going to say that you were watching the clips and... <laughs> what what you might think for Macho Man doing a rap album? The beauty, the beautiful thing about rap prom, like wrestling promos, mm -hmm. especially Macho Man's, is that they could possibly work as rap lyrics. Mm -hmm. You know, if you oh, put that was exactly my point. Actually, yeah, I'm glad you brought that back. And it's like, if that were the case, this probably wouldn't have would have been received a lot better. Mm -hmm. But instead, he's trying way too hard with pre written. Oh, are we just gonna skip ahead to the disc? Oh uh, wait, I, I want to go. I just want to go back to the him just doing that. 
movies. <laughs> so I just want this to be implanted in pop culture history. Because this reminds me of every Eminem video where Eminem like punches like some guy dressed up as like pop culture thing. Like what? Punch. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but I'm going to punch this person. Uh, okay, so where, where, where did we go now? Where do we go now? Where do we go from here? Interesting piece of pop culture trivia once again. Uh, that song, Sweet Child of Mine, in the middle of... Oh, the, yeah. That was yeah, like, in the middle of that song. That was like, where do we go? Yeah. Oh, they're just going along with that? Yeah, okay. the part where they go, where do we go now? Where do we go now? Improvised. Yeah, people always assume that when a lyric is written, or when you hear a song, it's because, oh, well, they playing this out, right? No, literally, the, the song where uh, uh, Axl Rose... He was like, he didn't know what the fuck they were supposed to do for me. So he was like, where do we go now? Where do we go now? And he just kept going. So they were like, oh, this is a thing. Okay. Yeah. Fu the recording engineer was probably just like, fuck it, go with it. <laughs> <laughs> You're paying me $32,000 a minute. So I might as well fucking charge you for this shit. Uh, okay. So. Scrolling down from Castaway. <laughs> Remember when we made fun of the Castaway line? God. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh God! I just want oh, you to God, read this out because the, okay. beauty, the beauty of this. Yeah, just just read this out. The seeds for the champ six times I became in the ages for honor. I'm in the Hall of Fame. No, Take it away, he, news. No, he's not. <laughs> no, wait, point, that's he, he yeah. In his bring, career, he's he not. not. No, he wasn't in the Hall of Fame of anything. He was in the Hall of Fame in three him. years after his death. Yeah. Yeah, three, like 2015, a whole decade. Yeah. After this yeah. album came out, so is that the, if he was talking about a figurative Hall of Fame, <laughs> like as in people know that he exists, so metaphorically. I guess in your the hall pop culture Hall of Fame. Yeah, I see a hand raised in from the crowd. In your Hall of Fame head cannon, he's and, in there. <laughs> yeah, and I am not one because I remember being a person who raised my hand once when people didn't call on me. So now I'm calling on the person who has raised their hand. Please don't have a shitty question. Because if it's a shitty question, I would feel really disappointed. Please have a good question that relates to Macho Man Randy's head. Maybe he sees the future. Ooh. You know? Ooh, yeah. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Ooh, that's we, a good one. Can we, can we do a callback? Maybe Macho Man Randy Savage saw the future like my man Biggie Smalls. Oh. Y'all will remember back in 1994 when he said... I'm soon to get paid, blow up like the world trade. Oh. When he said, yo. Well, he was talking about 1993's attack on the towers. Yo, don't be ruining shit. <laughs> don't be ruining shit with facts. Conspiracy theories are not about facts. They're about believing that the government is really more thought, powerful than a bunch of fucking people trying to figure out. I thought out you were what gonna say that you're listening to the Macho Man album and go, man, you remember rapping Duke da Ha da Ha? Who knew <laughs> that hip hop would take it this far? You know? That it would get to Macho Man. You know? Even the, even the guy from the Pontiac Silver Dump, wrestling Ricky Steamboat, even he. <laughs> So, now, now the point of the, of the Hall of Fame of mine was that I wanted to bring it to you. He was not in the Hall of Fame. In no, no, not at the time. No. He wasn't at this time, he was still technically, in a weird way, blacklisted. Yes. <laughs> because of the, actually, because of the Slim Jim deal. Because he took that shit to WCW and it was very lucrative and Vince didn't get any of that money. Not because he had sex with an underage Stephanie, which was the rumor for years. Mm hmm Excuse me? It never happened. Please elaborate. That, that, that's it. Honestly. Oh, that didn't happen. Okay, so basically no, what you're saying happen. is, here is a thing that didn't happen, so, so it shouldn't be a problem. Exactly. Uh, so how many of you actually know about the WCW, WWF Monday Night Wars? W, W, lots of U's. Okay, good. Right, so sorry. everybody knows what the hell we're talking about. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. For those of you who didn't raise your hand, uh, Vince McMahon basically bought WCW and right. basically just put all of those wrestlers who were part of that brand into what we call mid-card hell. Yeah. Until they actually except got over, team. except for Chris Jericho, because apparently he keeps coming back for some reason. <laughs> and, 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 and Booker was the champ at the time, right? Yeah, so you really know, five couldn't. time, five time, five. six time champion. So, so, so they couldn't. Well, six time, yeah. Just going ahead, <laughs> yeah, six, six time champ. Yeah, six time champ. I'm in the Hall of Fame. The O is for Oh Yeah. Okay, so there's a point in this <laughs> in this song, which the re us telling you this makes you want to go like. You know, we should definitely check out this album just to hear how crazy it gets. It's on Spotify. It is, it on, is Spotify. on Spotify. If you want to listen to this for the rest of the convention, which most of you people will, especially to hear the tribute to Mr. Perfect when we get to that, it'll get stuck 
in your fucking head there, for no good reason. There are fucking Taylor Swift albums that are on Spotify. <laughs> Meanwhile, fucking Macho Man Randy Savage available at your leisure. <laughs> you know Lenny Poffo is eventually going to go, his brother, is going to get on there and be like, we're not getting any of that lucrative money. Take that off there. Put it on <laughs> title if you're going to put it on your uh, Yeah, where no you one will give a shit, title. like Kanye's album. Oh. Uh, the oh. Legend of Pablo. <laughs> Excuse me. No one will talk about that in about six months anyway. Should be on the next podcast, right? <laughs> So remember, tw- remember Trump Plaza in Atlantic City. Remember? Do you remember Trump Plaza? I yes. fucking don't. Who remembers Trump Plaza in Atlantic City? So here's the thing. So I'm lying. I don't it. know how I'm raising my hand. Okay, so we're all remember. old, is what I'm basically saying here. WrestleMania four and five were held. Yep. In, in Trump, Trump Plaza. Plaza in yep. Atlantic City, and Trump was and old Trump at the time, all bright eyed and bushy tailed. We didn't know a damn thing about him besides that he had money. He was in attendance hey, and acting like he just loved the shit out of it. I don't mean to get political in any way. I know that people have said, oh, we're the Tumblr, fucking whatever. But. 1106, just a reminder. Please don't. <laughs> please don't vote for Trump. Can I just say this right now? Please don't vote for the reality star. Can we not. Just and real, and real quick. if not for anything, because you'd be opening the precedent for Kim Kardashian, also a reality uh-huh. star, <laughs> reality star to vote go for presidency. Please don't do that, because I know Kanye is going for presidency. Just sort of like it'll be ridiculous can, for Kanye can just, to go for presidency. So wouldn't it be just, less strange to go for Kim Kardashian? Don't fall for it. Wait, just well, don't fall for the shit. Can I just can I just interject here? But if Trump, okay, let me just play devil's advocate here. Interjections. If, if Trump became president, they show excitement or emotion. If Trump became president, RuPaul could become president. Ow. Like next? Yeah. I vote twice. Right? <laughs> right? Yo, that is voter infringement, and you're the whole reason why something, something thousand dollars are being voted just to make sure black poor people don't vote. Anyway, <laughs> I see a hand up, and another we are going to go for that and person. Another one. Please, another one. Another, another hand. One. <laughs> please ask a question. They don't want you to ask please, questions. Please let it be related to Macho Man Randy Savage. Or DJ Khaled. Huh, excuse me? What if Trump released a rap off? Wow. Uh, can I Zero say this? Zero stars. Zero can, stars. Can I say ever. this? Don't vote for Trump <laughs> in a train or in a car. <laughs> in a fucking. Wait, excuse me. Allow me to Google fucking. Don't uh, <laughs> Dr. Seuss lyrics no, for fucking please. green eggs and ham no. to tell you all the places that you should just not fucking vote for Trump. This shouldn't even be a controversial thing. This should be like, if you're voting for Trump, yo, if you're voting for Trump, I, I wish, just for this point, can we have a physical, for the podcast listeners at home, just so they can, lear, uh, just so they can physically see me? Come on, son. Really? You vote for Trump? Mom, do you have a question? Come on, son. Oh, uh, you have a question, please. I hear old Bernie Sanders got an album out. He does, actually. He does Whoa. have an album. I heard the Pope has an album out. And if anyone can get me that shit, because I am a Catholic, please get me that shit exclusive. Before we transition back, back to the album, I just wanted to say... We still have over 20 minutes to bullshit. <laughs> just, just, just to answer that question, actually, if Trump actually did release a rap album, it would be the first and only time he actually reached out to the black community. The Going Off podcast. We have so much social commentary, you can't even stand it. So, uh, hot diggity damn, I'm glad you set it off. And set it off. Right. Used to be hard Hulk, now you just turn soft. And the idea is that Hulk isn't as hard as he used to be, unlike Macho Man Randy Savage, which, as we all know, these classic battles that just happen yeah. continuously from 2000 to the year 2003. But as I'm informed... There from- weren't any. <laughs> <laughs> and, no, and, and, no, there weren't. As you say, he's so hard. Hogan is obviously a chump, a real big chump. Yeah. A punk. Well, here's because the what's thing. he doing? No, but he's a chump because he's doing commercials. Yeah. yeah. Right. Doing telephone commercials. Because, I see you. because Macho never did commercials. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking for commercials anything. only for sauce, am I right? The point that I was trying to make is snap into his. He also did commercials. Why the fuck are you calling out someone else for doing fucking commercials when you did commercials yourself? Right. 
Okay, but see, I think what his thought process was that oh, okay. Snap into a Slim Jim is way cooler than a fucking telephone commercial. Than the one eight hundred collect. Okay, I will say, fucking Mr. Mr. T. <laughs> okay, if you're if you're Mr. T and you're doing the same caliber of commercials as fucking Carrot Top, you're not cool anymore. Hey, can we agree to that? Can I get a like physical like? I don't think any of these people the want to, like, die by Mr. T's hands. No, no, but what I mean is, like, you're not as cool if you're fucking on the same level as Carrot Top doing fucking commercials and shit. David but, Arquette, and it, dude. So much connection. If Real quick. David Arquette, former WCW champion, 1-800 collect commercials. Hogan, 1-800 collect commercials. Who else? Mr. T, tag team with Hogan. At WrestleMania one, you know how yep, much that's a thing. It all comes full circle. You know how little I know about. Uh, like wrestling. Don't worry, we'll catch you up. We'll catch you up. You know how little, I, you know how little I know about commercials. When the when I hear tag team, the first thing I think of is tag team back again. <laughs> I think of like and, and the motherfuckers out there on the internet didn't laugh. You motherfuckers didn't grow up on fucking tag team. Whoop, there it is. Fuck y'all. No, not fuck y'all, because y'all listening, and I like y'all. Motherfuckers who don't listen, fuck those people, right? Because you're not those guys. No, I'm playing so hard. Um, okay, uh, dancing inside's like a ballerina. Yeah, okay, okay. Now, here's here's the thing that, that I think you wanted to bring up. He says, he says, yeah, I seen you dancing in tights like a ballerina. Yeah, because as we all know, uh, fucking wrestlers don't run around in tights, am I right? Okay, well that's not true. Not all wrestlers run around in tights. Some of them run around in shorts. Shorts, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, it is totally different. And, and if you're a girl, a skirt, sometimes. Yeah. This is a reference to a movie that came out in like 92, 93, Mr. Nanny. Not a, like it's yeah. a different thing. No oh, God. Uh -huh. but, um, can we, we not get into Hulk Hogan's movie career, Please. please. Oh, your pay-per-view uh, was a joke talking about a match it had with uh, about The Rock, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna have to get smoked. Rock f phony fight. Come on, that phony fight. The Rock spanked. Now, here's what's confusing about this lyric. He's saying that yeah, it was a phony fight. Now, first of all, if you're gonna say that something is phony, if you're gonna say that something involving the World Wrestling Federation being <laughs> phony, especially for someone as old school as Randy Savage. <laughs> You it, wouldn't admit that it was phony. Yeah, exactly. You keep up the kayfabe as someone like yeah, like, at you that keep point in the time they did that not. Would say it was yeah, because at that point in time they didn't believe in breaking kayfabe. And now yet. we're saying it's phony. Well, yeah, it's just because Hogan was part of it, I suppose. Now here's the thing that I didn't understand. Now I'm going to be coming at this from the same um, direction as most of the people who maybe aren't as deep into wrestling as most people. I when I heard this album, I didn't know. Like, the assumption is that, oh, oh yeah, all of this is fake, right? Right. Like, that Hulk and yeah. Macho, Man, uh, Macho Man Randy Savage, it's not a real beef. Like, it's kayfabe. They're however, just hating each other because it goes with the storyline. But... However, um, this actually does stem from Hogan going on the Bubba the Love Sponge radio show. If, please if you explain. Bubba the Love Sponge, by the way, is the douchebag radio host that actually leaked the sex tape footage of Hogan, by the way. Um... But, um, and actually called up Randy Savage's father on the radio show and was just an all around general dick to him for no real reason. Which, like you said, brings up the point if this diss track was actually a real response to actual beef, yeah. you wouldn't be talking like this. Yeah, no, you would be, be saying much like, more visceral. Exactly. You would be like, Fuck you. Maybe there's something like literally relating to something that maybe happened in the locker you would, room. You would be much meaner in this. Yeah. yeah. Especially he was like, man, Hogan doesn't even get dressed in the same locker room as the other boys. He thinks he's better than everybody. Man, that's really cool. That, that's, that's a really real thing. Why didn't you mention that in the song? Right. No, no, no. I want this to be specifically picked out because what, what did you say? What? You said he... <laughs> when? <laughs> no, I'm not trying to joke. I'm he saying says a real. lot of things. No, he literally didn't um, um, get dressed or whatever in the same locker room as the rest of the. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he, well, he, here's I, the, I, I didn't say that. Here's yeah, yeah. The he thing. thought he was better than everybody else. But uh, I want them to be pointed out, like specifically. Oh, oh yeah, but it's like yeah, but don't mention that in the song, and that's a, that's a real thing. Yeah, why would you not mention that in the song? Because you know? he had to. Well, I remember he had like to talk one about of the, him getting spanked and stuff. Well, I remember like one of the rumors going around when the Mega Powers break up broke up, which was Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage, right. was that. 
Macho Man was a little pissed off because Hulk Hogan at the time was the face of the company. Right. And if you don't know what a face of the company is, that's John Cena. Yeah, now. Or, or John Cena! <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> I just did that to our own fucking live podcast. Oh my God. Wait, wait. Can I say for a second? I didn't say this on the podcast. I said that on your podcast, but it didn't get officially recorded. The little part of the beginning where it goes, Ramadu! Okay, y'all heard that, right? Yeah. All right. Yes. Here, here's, here's something I want to tell y'all. That, <laughs> excuse me, fucking, oh uh, I'm so sorry. Uh-oh. Uh, Tom's going to make you pay for it. No, no. Can I say this? That, that little, Ramadu? Yeah. Y'all, know, y'all heard it, right? Yes. The reality of that situation is that that sampling came, comes from the uh, M.O.P. song. Annie Up. Yeah, Annie Up. Where, where it starts off with, Ramadou! And then it goes into the beat. Yeah, at the beginning of that song, that, was, that song was made in 2000, and it was a reference to something that happened in 1999, which was the shooting of a, a, an African immigrant. Mm, he's black, whatever. And yeah, exactly. Real? And they were yeah, they were in, yeah, he they, told me about this. they were specifically oh, saying like it was a tribute to this person who had been shot and shot forty one times by the police in nineteen ninety nine. This black American, African American, like literally African American, like he literally just came off mm-hmm. the boat, and they were referencing him, and that was like their little tribute to him by saying like That's you know really just like cool, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's MOP. Really cool of them to not exploit that as an entrance theme. Yeah, it was, it was literally them just saying like, maybe, you know, not all artists have some, fu- uh, uh, fucking Maya Angelou said it best. Like not all artists write music because they have an answer to something. They write it because they have a song to sing. Mm-hmm. And fuck it, maybe, you know, MOP just wanted to tell you, wanted to remind the fucking people who might remember this song by MOP, fucking Annie Up, the remix that you remember from fucking Buster Rhymes going, Annie Up, smack that fool. There was a point in there, every time you hear that song, you'll hear the beginning where he says, Ramadu, where it's this man who was shot 41 times by the police in 1999, before, in 2014, where we started talking about fucking cops, we're getting, yeah. we're shooting black people, da da da. It's been but, a thing. But that, that is the undercurrent of social commentary that you can personally look up by yourself and all the social, whatever, fucking political changes mm-hmm. and shit. I'm drunk. Anyway, going back to the point, we still got six minutes, boom, let's do it. What was the point you wanted to make? Thank you. Um, <laughs> no, I just saw Peter laugh because, yeah, okay. Wild card, I'm drunk. All right. How, how do you scroll down? Oh, uh, let me just scroll down. Uh, what, the next lyric. Okay, now I think this is funny. This is kind of a valid point. Going back to the diss song that uh, Rock, Macho Man Randy Savage made. Right. He talks about, he says, They call you Hollywood. Don't make me laugh because your movies and your acting skills are both trash. Now, Randy Savage makes a good fucking point that fucking... His acting is... Subpar. <laughs> well, no, honestly, best. this is probably the most accurate lyric on the album. <laughs> the hardest hitting line. <laughs> now, uh, and now let's look at the next lyric where he says, Your movie's straight to video, the box office can't stand. But here's what damns him. Well, I got myself a feature role in Spider-Man. It wasn't a feature role. Yeah, it's not a goddamn feature role. Yo! If you took a bathroom break, you would have missed it. <laughs> Seriously. Like, fucking, fucking Macy Gray might as well have bragged about being in Spider Man. Okay. I'm actually people, surprised by how, how many, many people, people know that fucking Spider Man. I forgot that she was huh? in that. How many people actually remember Macho Man Randy Savage's cameo in Spider Man? Oh, oh, yes. yes! Yes! Okay. Can I, can I do it? Can I do it, please? Boonsaw yeah. right. is ready! Alright. But how many people remember fucking Macy Gray? I don't remember that she was in that. You, she, she was like in it. The, the part where they're doing this parade? Mm-hmm. She's randomly oh in there. Oh my god. And my point was that it's like, dude, it's a fucking two minute ca- Like, no one yeah. gives a shit. So for you to you like, I understand dissing uh, uh, Hollywood Hulk fine because he's saying that he's the Hollywood Hulk even though He's a terrible act, like, I wouldn't even slightly, like, not even remotely, like, oh, good popcorn, no, he's a really bad actor. 
and you shouldn't like him at all. And if you do, it's a guilty pleasure. Like guilty isn't you should feel bad for liking it. Uh, but at the same time, for you to act like my cameo in fucking Spider-Man is so is a better. thing that puts you down. Like, oh, you know what really shows me as the person above you? The cam the fucking two minute cameo I did in fucking Spider-Man. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's not good enough. Like, maybe if he was fucking. What was a good movie at that, uh, at that time that people talk about? Fucking Crimson Tide? Maybe if it had like a fucking lead role in Crimson Tide. I'm glad people are laughing because they fucking remember that movie. Uh, if he had I just a fucking... love that that's like the apex to you in 2000. Wow, you really... Well, no, because my point is that there are a lot of movies that like are remembered like at the time as being like, yeah. oh man, that's a great fucking movie. But like 10 years from now, like does anyone really remember ca giving a shit about Castaway? Oh, what, what? See, y'all won't even raise your hands like instinctively. Because you didn't know that's where you were going. Exactly! <laughs> anyway. We got about three minutes left and we're Oh, who the fuck is doing a panel at midnight? What? Okay. The worst audition. Okay. Um, oh, well, okay, we gotta go see we'll, that. We'll go see the worst audition shit. What would you rate this out, out of five? Okay, okay, out of five, I would rate this a 1.5. I'd give it a two. I saved two. I give it a two. Look at this motherfucker being nicer than me. Actually, Fucking the only reason I would give it a nicer two. Than you. <laughs> nicer than you. The only reason hey. I would give it a two is because I I'm riding the nostalgia hype train. Okay. <laughs> so right now, because because we gotta wrap this up, I yeah. just really from the bottom of my heart, I know I say it at the well, end. Well, the last time. long the last song I was gonna bring up was the fucking tribute. I to know we don't person. have time for it though. Yeah, yeah. I just gotta say, and I say it at the end of every episode, but I oh. seriously mean it because I had no idea that I'd be looking at so many faces today. Honestly, oh, no. thank thank everybody that came out to this panel. It means all of you. so much. I want to see to all us. of you. It really does mean a lot because you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you for having all the Oscars. Because I'm gonna be 100% oh, yeah. legit with you. We will always be real with you all of the yeah. time. We'll do we were not expecting anyone but like the people we know to be here. Like we were expecting like Molly, Count Jackula. Like we know these motherfuckers. We were expecting them to be here. We were not expecting all the people that we didn't know to be here. And that feels cool to us because it's like the people that have no, like they have no like uh, bearings on whether, it didn't matter if to them personally, like they didn't owe us being here, but they were here tonight because they think that we're entertaining to the point of coming out and wasting their time and not going to the Ninja Sex Party concert. You can probably catch I up apologize on later profusely anyway. exactly. for that, by the way. So, uh, so, so as a special thank you, mm -hmm. um, we have a um, an exclusive Macho Man pop vinyl here that, that the three of us are going to sign, and we're going to try to give away to someone that came out to this panel. We're not exactly sure how. We're going to do it after the panel. Um, outside, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. We're gonna have to figure out exactly how to do that. No, Tom, but, it's okay. <laughs> but we will figure out exactly how. Again, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, this will be up soon. Wait, wait. I want to say personally. I want to say personally. I will never tell you shit that is not from the heart. I really thank you guys for being here tonight. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of the Going Off Podcast, recorded live at Magfest. In addition to this edited down for YouTube and SoundCloud edition of the show, we will also have a video, full video of the uh, panel, not nearly edited down as much. So that's basically the, uh, the whole panel you'll be able to see in, in all its glory. So until next time, this is Muse for the Going Off Podcast telling you to suck a dick. <laughs>